Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to talk about how to wire analog inputs and outputs to an Allen Bradley Micro 820 PLC and a little about programming analog in the Connected Components Workbench software. For this video, we're going to be using one of our PLC trainers and on the front of it, it has a potentiometer which can be connected to a PLC's analog input and it also has an analog gauge which reads voltage and milliamps. And for this video, we're gonna be doing voltage on both. Please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Your question this week could easily be next week's automation topic. On our 820 PLC, these first four inputs, inputs zero through three, are 24 volt sinking inputs but they also can read an analog signal from zero to 10 volts. And on the bottom, you have one analog output, which is V0-0, and that's gonna put out a zero to 10 volt signal. So in a previous video, we went through how a potentiometer works, that you can put 10 volt to the outside terminals, and this middle one is a wiper that'll give you a varying signal from zero to 10. So I'm not gonna go into a lot of the details of it, but I will put a link in the description to that video. But we're gonna start by connecting three wires to it. And then on the top of our 820, the two left terminals are actually a 10 volt reference signal and our DC minus. And we can use those two to connect to the outside of our potentiometer. So let's go ahead and do that. So take one of your outside wires and go to that left terminal, which is the plus 10 volt, and take your other outside wire and go to that DC minus, which is right beside of it. And then take your center wire and connect it to I00. So when you're finished, your outside potentiometer terminal should be to the left terminal and the second to left terminal, and the middle post of your potentiometer should be to that third from the left terminal. And then we have our meter to hook up, and our meter has a milliamp signal, and it also has a voltage signal. The first terminal of our smaller strip, you can't quite see that. So you have three terminals down here. The two right ones are the plus and minus of our milliamp signal, which we'll actually use in the next video. This left hand one though is our voltage signal. So we're gonna connect a wire to that left hand terminal. And if you're not using one of our trainers, this would be the plus of your meter or whatever you're displaying to, or your drive command signal, anything like that. And we're gonna connect it to this V0-0 terminal on the bottom of our PLC. That's it for our wiring. Now let's go into the Connected Components Workbench software and add a little bit of code into it. So let's click a new program and we'll just call it analog. And then under controllers, we're gonna select a micro 820 and ours is a 2080 LC20 20 QWB. And we're using version 12. So we'll select it and add to project. And then before we go any further, let's change our ethernet configuration because the default ethernet configuration for our micro 820 PLC is gonna be 192, 168, 110. So let's go ahead and add that. And you may have this nice little pretty picture of a PLC here. It kind of crowds all of this. So just hit this double up arrow here to get it out of the way and then you can see what you're doing. So we're gonna configure IP address and settings. I'm going to put 192, 168, 110, and we're going to use a subnet of 255, 255, 255, 0. And that'll be good enough. So now let's right click programs and let's add a ladder diagram and go ahead and open it up. And to start with, we're going to add one simple line of code. We're going to use an instruction block and type MOV. And that's going to bring up our move copy command. For our input, double click on the bottom half of it. And let's go over to our IO Micro 820. And at the beginning, you'll see all of our digital outputs and then our digital inputs. But if you scroll down a little further, you'll see our analog inputs and output. And we're going to be using analog input zero. That's I-O-E-M-A-I-0-0. 
Now this is the exact same physical terminal as this digital input up here, IOEMDI00. That address is connected to the same terminal. But this up here says that you have 24 volts, such as when we're wiring to one of our buttons. This down here is gonna read the actual voltage signal coming off of our potentiometer. So we're gonna use it for our input. And then for our output, we're gonna go back to that IO Micro 820 tab, and we're gonna select the analog output, which is the last one here, IO EMAO00. Now one thing when you're selecting these, and I don't know if I actually have covered this, if you click on the top of these, it brings you down this selection chart, which gives you every option available. And you can easily type, let's say underscore IO. We can get to it really fast that way. But if you're not sure the actual address, if you'll click on the bottom of it instead, that's what'll bring up this variable selector, which kind of groups them, makes it really easy to find them. But that's it for our program. So now we're gonna go ahead and download our program. And I'm not gonna go step by step through that because we already have videos of it. And I'll put a link to this whole playlist in the description. I just realized I might have misled you on this program, but I've already torn down the trainer. Actually, we're getting ready to do some PowerFlex videos now. But I put that move instruction in there, really just to throw a value from the potentiometer to the analog output really quickly so that we could see how they both work. But those values are not scaled volt per volt. So your analog input scaling is zero to 4,095. So zero to 10 volts is gonna be zero to 4,095 units. Your built-in analog output, zero to 10 volt is zero to 4,008. So that's the actual scaling numbers. And yeah, we'll do a video later on where we actually use the scaling numbers and do something neat with them. Uh, but the main point of this was just to show you how to wire them, how to address them, but they're not scaled perfectly there. Okay, now let's flip our train around and see what we have. And our potentiometer is all the way clockwise and we're showing zero. And if we turn it counterclockwise all the way over, then yeah, we're getting a little over 10 volts. So it works, but it's backwards. And if you have the same situation, and all you have to do is swap the two outside wires. So let's go ahead and swap just the outside two wires. Leave that middle wire, which is the wiper, where it's at. So now all the way counterclockwise is zero volt. If we turn it, say, halfway, then yeah, we're at about five volt. And we continue on up. Now we're 10 volt fully clockwise. And that's the basics of how to wire analog voltage signals, both inputs and outputs, to your Micro 820 PLC. So a common question I get is, oh, it's great that we have these nice voltage inputs on the 820 PLC, but most industrial input, but most industrial analog inputs are 4 to 20 milliamp. Do I have to use expansion modules to take care of them? No, you don't. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you how you can connect your four to 20 milliamp signals to these and how to get them scaled. Till next time. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.